How's it going, everyone? We have another viewer request today, which is awesome. I love the requests. Please keep them up. I want to know what you guys want to know. Otherwise, I'm just sitting here talking to myself about my own experiences. <laughs> today, we're going to talk about the Black Flame. It's something that I've mentioned in some previous videos. It's something that's been mentioned by other YouTube channels. It's been mentioned by several occult orders. What's going on? What is this black flame that everybody's talking about? Well, you might get a different answer depending on who you ask. Somebody might tell you that, oh, this belongs to this YouTube channel or <laughs> something. This belongs to this author. The thing is, we're talking about the occult here, guys. Everything is symbolic. Even if somebody coins a term, it's probably something that is an amalgam of things that they learned from other people. If I mention the Black Flame, that doesn't associate me with any occult organization. It doesn't associate me with any specific YouTube channel. It's a very symbolic concept. And in order to understand symbolism, you have to break it down. The first rule of translation, in my mind, is context. And the way that you find context is by separating things and looking at them individually in this instance. So first, what is, what is meant when someone talks about an inner flame? Well, a lot of times it relates to passion. It relates to wisdom. It relates to enlightenment. And what is meant by the color black? Well, often mystery. So one could look at the black flame as a source of illuminated mystery. You could look at it as a drive towards inner mystery, towards a passion of understanding the deeper, hidden self. It's got nothing to do with a certain sect or organization. Ever since people began traditions, there was an exoteric facet or an external aspect of that knowledge, and there's an esoteric aspect of that knowledge, which is to say the inner understanding that comes from meditation and and self-examination, as well as outer examination, but it, it comes from meditation and, and looking into the unknown. If I'm not mistaken, I think the first time that it was mentioned in occult literature was back in the 70s by, oh boy, the author's name escapes me, but I believe it was in the, the, Diab Diabolicon. Um, it was, was it an, an Aquinas? <laughs> Thomas Aquinas, maybe? Um, the name escapes me. I apologize. But it was first mentioned in the 70s. So to the people who were claiming that this belongs to a certain YouTube channel <laughs> or a certain um, ideology from the last 10 years, you're wrong. And, and you should do your research before you start accusing people of being a part of things that they're not a part of. Um, another way to look at the black flame is sort of a source of illumination toward the individual, um, the, the essence of the individual, rather, where we have the white flame that relates, in my, uh, in my opinion, in my experience, that relates to the higher self, the archangel, the Socratic daemon. The black flame then, naturally, would relate to the individual self, the shadow, the archdemon, if you will. So when I talk about fueling or igniting the black flame, and I give a mantra to inspire you to find your own mantra, 
it's a call to the individual self. It's a call to look within and find what is hidden, what's there, but goes unseen. That is what I'm talking about when I'm addressing the black flame. The color black relates to mystery and fire is illumination and power. You can look at it however you want, but the important thing is to understand how to break down symbols in the occult and take a step back and look at them from what they are and, and not say, oh, this person said that word. Anyone who says that word must be associated with them. That is a fallacy that will get you in trouble more times than it won't. Again, just because someone says something that someone else says doesn't make them related. I, I, I cannot say that enough. I can't express that enough because I have had people raise concerns and accusations that I'm associated with certain YouTube channels that are no longer around um, and sub channels of those that are related. I hadn't even heard of most of the people that I'm being accused of being associated with until their names were brought up to me. I So much of my time, I've been doing this for almost two decades and 15 years of that was spent off of the internet, no contact to other practitioners, no association with any forums or anything like that. I didn't even know about any of that stuff until maybe the last four or five years. Um, technology is not my forte. I am buried in, in books and research from the past. I, a lot of times, go completely oblivious to, and, and at my own detriment sometimes, but a lot of times I go completely oblivious to what other people are doing around me because I find it distracting. And I, I basically check in at this point to make sure that I'm not doing something somebody else is doing um, that's over overdone and overexposed because I want people to come here and learn. I don't want people to come here and be bogged down by things that they've already heard before. Anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, drop some comments if you want some more explanation or if you have other ideas for things for me to cover. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of the day.